Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avergelli. Officials at the County Council are discussing a federal grant that's aimed at curbing gang violence along the border with Prince George's County. Susan Kennedy has the story. Susan? Lorna Montgomery County Police have been chosen as the lead agency on this project that's designed to curtail gang crime and violence here in the county. The $1.2 million grant will be used to step up police presence in targeted areas that have seen an uptick in youth crime. Last name spelling is Craig with an A. The money will fund the Montgomery and Prince George's County gang initiatives. So it's a bigger concern because gangs are not operating in a vacuum and there's evidence of upticks, you know, around us as well and how these things play off against each other, you know, I, th I think, you know, can have adverse impacts. We have a serious problem that's out there in Montgomery County alone. We have over 1,300 members of identified gang of our youth in the county and gang members uh, apparently go from one side of the jurisdiction to the other in and out of Prince George's County, the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia and into Montgomery. Montgomery County. So having uh, additional resources to help us to combat the challenge that we have between these two jurisdictions I think is a, an excellent source of revenues and support for us. Officials say one of the primary goals of this initiative is to dismantle gangs operating in the region. By coordinating resources, officials hope to reduce gang activity as well as the recruitment of young children into these groups. Councilmember Elbridge says that piece is key in fighting this battle. The county, frankly, is underpoliced. We are probably a couple hundred officers below the level we should be, at a minimum. And the result, of course, is less patrol activity and less flexibility. You know, if you don't have enough officers where you can move people to where they're needed because you're afraid of creating a hole someplace else, this will give us some dedicated officers who you know, can be focused where we really want them to be focused. And I think in the long run, we're going to have to address the size of our police force because it's just flat out not not where it should be. I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Work has begun within the Council's Public Safety Committee on a teen curfew measure introduced by the County Executive. For young people under the age of 18, the curfew would be 11 p.m. on weeknights and midnight on weekends. The Council remains somewhat split on this measure that was introduced as a result of the upstick in youth crime throughout the county. You know, I came out originally and was very uh, skeptical about the efficacy of having a curfew. Uh, but now that I've had a chance to sit and talk with some of the police officers that are out there on the front lines and understand that even as a part of the Germantown flash mob incident, uh, that some of those individuals were stopped uh, previously. And if there was a curfew, would have been sent home, makes a significant difference because that crime might have been prevented. And so understanding that and understanding that, again, if implemented correctly, I think that the curfew bill could actually be a good thing for us and help us to stamp out youth crime. I've raised a lot of issues about it. Uh, I believe it's unjustified based on the uh, situation in Montgomery County since crime is going down, gang-related crime is going down. Uh, I don't think a curfew is justified uh, given the conditions. Uh, if people do think it's justified, then they'll have a lot of questions, I think, about the details of it. So there are lots of issues to look at. There have been curfews in place in other places that have been studied. Those results show uh, very little impact, if any, on crime. Uh, and so one has to ask you know, what the experience has been and is it worth uh, trying to repeat it. Officials from the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene launched in Montgomery County the state's health improvement process known as SHIP. The goal is to create a partnership that provides accountability, local action and public engagement to make progress in Maryland's health. The SHIP tool offers local planners a model for population health planning, local data sets, resources for action and through its interactive website a series of specific tools and ongoing technical assistance. We want to be accountable for the money that we spend. And we can't do that without collecting very serious data and measuring over a time sequence our progress to give us a very informed perspective from which we can set our policy priorities so that when we go forward and say we're spending money for this instead of that, which is never easy to do, we're able to say here's the methodology that we use to reach this decision. 
Montgomery County homeowners can apply for a residential energy efficiency rebate program and obtain up to $3,000 in incentives for energy efficiency improvements, such as insulation, heating and cooling systems, and appliances. To be eligible, applicants must have an energy audit from an approved auditor and a scope of work from a contractor. For information on the program, auditing, and contracting requirements, visit mcenergyfunding.com. Montgomery County lost 11 of their own in the terrorist attacks on our nation. Now a park memorializes the victims and serves as a living tribute to those who passed. The county and the city of Rockville joined together to commemorate the victims of September 11. A Rockville 11's Bridget Royer was there. Bridget? That's right. It was a very moving and solemn tribute to the victims and their families. Though originally intended to be held outside here at the 9-11 Memorial at Courthouse Square Park, rain moved the event indoors. But the musical performances and speeches provided perspective, reflection, and hope to those in attendance. When they asked me to speak, I struggled to find what to say. What could be of value? As a sister of one of the victims of September 11th, what could I tell you about how we coped? I want to be able to say, yes, the families are fine. I want to be able to say, yes, we had a really, really hard time, but we're over it. It's not nearly as simple as that. We are forever changed. The nation, the families, and I am forever changed. The terrorists attacked us because of the very freedoms we hold dear as a country. The freedom to pursue happiness without fear or, or reprisal or discrimination on the basis of the color of your skin, the bent of your religious belief, the politics you hold, or the way you speak. While our lives may have been marked by this event, this horrible event, we cannot allow it to define us. We cannot allow ourselves to forget that even while there is evil, that which is most important, that which is truer than what we, the pain we have experienced, is the love that also exists in every moment. The memorial to the events of September 11, 2001 is located in Courthouse Square Park. The artists, Jean and Susan Flores, built and installed the memorial in less than six months back in 2003. Each bench contains personal quotes memorializing each of the lost residents. The artist conveyed it was important that the sculpture has turned out to be both moving and yet still park-like. The whole point of the ceremony today <laughs> was remembrance and, and the part that you need to make the connection with are the people that are left uh, for those that were lost. Well, I thought it was a very poignant ceremony and uh, I think expressed a lot of the very uh, strong emotions and uh, you know, the sadness but the determination to, to persevere. Uh, that we've seen in the 10 years since. For County Report This Week, I'm Bridget Breuer. County Executive Ike Leggett participated in several community events that commemorated the 10th anniversary of the terrorist attacks, including an interfaith service of memory and hope at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Rockville. And the executive also joined community members at Block Rock Center for the Arts. During this Germantown Remembers celebration, Leggett addressed the audience and commented on the importance of first responders, especially in Montgomery County. For our officers and for those who protect us today, I want to thank you. Thank you on behalf of a grateful county. We lost in Montgomery County 11 lives on that day, and we should never, ever forget the lives that we've lost the people who protect us today, and the lives who will be lost if we do not maintain our vigilance for the future. When we come back, we will take you to a gathering of 15,000 who joined to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month. And we bring relief for homeowners facing possible foreclosure.
Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Starting on September 15th and for a full month, Hispanics across the United States celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. And as part of those celebrations here in Montgomery County, the Salvadoran community kicked off commemorations in their annual Independence Day Festival. Here's more. The Montgomery County Fairgrounds transforms itself every year to host the culture of El Salvador. Over 15,000 people gather to celebrate that country's Independence Day, a day of national pride and culture preservation. He recognizes that the Latino community is growing every day in Montgomery County, and the largest group is from El Salvador, so as the county executive, he wants to you know, be where the people are, his constituents, and the Salvadorans are a big part of that. It is estimated that approximately 50,000 Salvadorans call Montgomery County home. One of the biggest attractions at the festival is the entertainment lineup. We have a lot of artists coming back from El Salvador, a lot of people from back home, and we have a lot of Spanish Salvadorian community here, so everybody knows who they are, and they're perfect, so they come for the entertainment. But also for a taste of traditional Salvadoran dishes, like pupusas. Goya has been around for 75 years. It's a company founded by immigrants, so we support a lot of our community, immigrant community, and, you know, we are like, the taste of the Americas. We have 1,600 products. The festival is family oriented and it is all about passing on cultural values to the next generation born in Montgomery. Well, it's an opportunity for them to learn because that's one of the things I want I wanted them to understand is backgrounds, where we come from. And this is part of it, showing their food, the music, the people, you know, it's an opportunity for us as a parent to show our kids what is our culture about. The festival is held every year in early September. The Montgomery County Department of Housing and Community Affairs will host a free legal counseling session to county homeowners who are falling behind in their mortgage payments or are facing foreclosure. Homeowners will receive one-on-one -on -one foreclosure and prevention counseling offered by trained representatives from approved housing counseling agencies. The event will take place on Saturday, October 1st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Boer Park Activity Center. And now we get our police update from Officer Rebecca Innocenti with a very peculiar robbery in Damascus. Officer? That's right, Lorna. The Montgomery County Police Department is investigating the theft of a horse from the tailor-made stables in Damascus. It is believed that the horse was stolen between the hours of 8 p.m. on September 2nd and 4 a.m. on September 3rd. The female horse, whose name is Addie, is 12 years old and is a chestnut brown color. Now, if anybody sees or identifies this horse, what should they do? The police department is asking anyone who sees this horse or has information about this case to please call detectives at 240-773-6330. Thank you, Officer Nocente, for the update. When we come back, the county's elementary schools get praise from the federal government. And Montgomery College dresses up for the arts in the fall. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The U.S. Department of Agriculture paid a visit to Stephen Knoll School in Kensington to recognize them and all MCPS elementary schools for a very special achievement. It seems our students are taking pride in being healthy. Here's the story. How do you feel about the food that we've been serving these days? All right, I'll take that. Thank you. The United States Department of Agriculture honored every MCPS elementary school for their focus on health and nutrition, making them among a few select schools nationwide to receive such recognition. Only 10% of schools nationwide are honored with this award, and all MCPS elementary schools received it. I am very proud that every single one of our elementary schools has succeeded in creating an environment where every student has access to healthy food and a curriculum that helps them understand the importance of physical education and healthy choices when it comes to eating. One of the best aspects of Montgomery County are its schools. USDA's Undersecretary Kevin Concannon made a special visit to Arcola Elementary School to celebrate Montgomery County Public Schools' success in providing healthy meals, nutrition education, and time for physical activity during the school day. We want to balance healthy eating with exercise, 
We'll grow up healthier, we'll learn better over the course of the year, and schools like this one are really leaders. To receive the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Award, schools must offer vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and low-fat, fat-free milk and more. Physical exercise and lessons on nutrition and healthy living are incorporated into the school day. Having access to food and having access to healthy food is, of course, incredibly important. We've taken a lot of steps to ensure that students have healthy meals, time for physical activity during the day, and an opportunity to gain knowledge about how to live healthier lives. Students like the healthy menu options and enjoy exercising. Well, healthy lunches help you grow big and strong. I like my healthy lunch because it's um, good and healthy. Eating healthy food makes me feel healthy and strong. Once they see that it's fun and it's tasty, then they, then they like it. MCPS is one of only a few school systems in the nation where all elementary schools receive this award. Congratulations. The performing arts are in full swing at Montgomery College with free and low cost events throughout the fall. Here are a couple of the free events open to the public at the Rockville Music Recital Hall. On September 28th, listen to the jazz performances of the Rockville campus faculty. And on September 29th, enjoy the Native American contemporary sounds of the Jeff Ball Band. This performance is part of the World Arts Festival, a series of performances, events, and exhibits that reflect our multicultural community. Both of these concerts are free and open to the public. To keep up with the arts events at Montgomery College, visit artsinstitute.montgomerycollege.edu. Well, the Filmer Music Center opens its doors in downtown Silver Spring, and those attending performances there should know where to park or to ride Metro to the events. Here's Tom Polk from the county's Department of Transportation to tell us how to best get to the Fillmore. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. Anticipation is high for the opening in downtown Silver Spring of the county's newest music venue, the Fillmore. Opening the week of September 15th, it's located on Colesville Road across from the AFI Movie Theaters just above Georgia Avenue. Here's some information on how to reach the center and where to park. First, let's start with the transit options. You can easily walk up Colesville Road from the Silver Spring Metro Station. There are also many Metro bus and ride-on bus routes that serve the downtown. Many routes run late into the evening and Metro operates till midnight on weekdays until 3 a.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. Next, let's cover the parking options if you drive. Your best bet is to go to the close by Spring Street Cameron Street garage. With more than 1,300 spaces, this garage has lots of available parking. It's a short stroll from the Fillmore's front door and is much less congested than some other parking garages in the area. For more transit or driving information to help you reach the Fillmore, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov/mcdot. We're working to keep you moving. Coming up, the annual Silver Spring Jazz Festival packed the house. We will give you a taste of what happened. And leave your car at home. We'll tell you why. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigeli. On any given weekend during the summer and fall months, downtown Silver Spring always has something to offer. Last weekend was all about the 8th annual Silver Spring Jazz Festival. Montgomery Community Media was there to capture it all. The vibrant downtown Silver Spring put on another amazing festival celebrating America's great art form, jazz. Now in its eighth year, the Silver Spring Jazz Festival is bigger and better with free live outdoor performances by prominent local talent and an internationally renowned headliner. County Executive Ike Leggett talks to us about the revitalized downtown Silver Spring. And the Silver Spring has a civic spirit about it. People really get out and care, and care for the community. We built down Silver Spring a new civic building, we're building a new library, a transit center. We're open now, feel more entertainment in Silver Spring, and we are really moving Silver Spring forward. The Civic Center at Veterans Plaza was definitely the perfect venue for this event. 
It's been a long time for this venue to come to the Silver Spring area. I live just on Georgia Avenue, straight shot. Here I am, got a great seat, love everything about it. Well, we came to the festival last year, had such a good time. We were determined to come this year and not miss it. Jazz is one genre of music that appeals to everyone. We spoke to a few of the artists to find out what jazz means to them. I grew up around jazz. My dad played jazz. He was a musician and his brother. They both were musicians. If you think about jazz and its roots and the roots of the rhythm of Latin music, right there you have the fusion. The jazz festival went on well into the evening with Silver Springs' own Marcus Johnson displaying a performance like no other. For a complete program schedule of the 8th Annual Silver Spring Jazz Festival, visit mymcmedia.org. Well, even during the winter months, we can have some color in the garden. Here are our friends at Brookside to show us what plant should be planted now to get full winter bloom. Hi. I'm Roger Hain, the horticulturist here at Brookside Gardens, and today we're going to talk about pansies. Pansies are an excellent flower. They can be planted in the fall, and they will last all winter into the spring. They do well in cooler weather. They don't like the hot summers. What we do with them here at Brookside is we put them in now. The bed will be completely full of color, fresh plants, which is excellent. And then in the spring, they'll even survive through the snow. In the spring, they'll come up and they'll bloom even fuller. So what I'm going to demonstrate to you today is how we plant them. They come in these pots and what we do is we take them out. You can see what the roots look like. I don't generally do anything with the roots like spread them out too much. They're all lined out in specific spacings. I dig a hole and I have to be very careful because I have some bulbs under here already and I don't want to disturb those bulbs. And we pop them in the ground and firm the soil back over top of the soil that was in the pot because we don't want them to dry out. When you're planting pansies, you don't want to stomp them into the ground. You just want to firm the soil because we don't want to press all the air out of the soil and make it too compact. Happy gardening. Thursday, September 22nd is Car Free Day, a worldwide movement to celebrate sustainable transportation. Residents are encouraged to go green and go to work by bicycling, walking, carpooling, taking transit, or even teleworking. Car Free Day is intended to fight traffic congestion and preserve the environment. And to close our show today, we would like to invite county residents to attend the upcoming town hall meeting hosted by County Executive Ike Leggett on September 21st at 7.30 p.m. at Westland Middle School, located at 5511 Massachusetts Avenue in Bethesda. Town hall meetings are an excellent opportunity for county government to find out residents' needs. The town hall meeting is free and open to all. I will be moderating it, and I hope to see you there. That does it for County Report this week. Join us at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for watching. Liliana Arango, director of the Hispanic Business Institute and MC's Workforce Development Program, has been recognized by the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for the Institute's impact in the local Hispanic business community and workforce. The 10th season of MC's World Arts Festival has begun. The year-long series celebrates music, dance, film, and visual art from around the world and reflects the 167 nationalities of the Montgomery College community. And make sure to check out an MC sporting event this fall. The men's and women's soccer teams and the women's volleyball squad are all highly ranked in preseason polls and all are expected to contend for their Maryland JUCO championships. You can find their schedules at the Athletics website. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.